Hey everyone, Depressy over here for another uh, DM diary. So, um, this uh, so at the end of the last the last diary, I mentioned we were I kind of talked about how they rested in this this um, barracks room here, and how I was going to pretty much just punish them for that for it, and uh, and I was definitely concerned about it. And I, you know, I was like, okay, they hit level four. Kaz, Kaz increased her con, which increased her AC and her HP. She's at, like, over 50 HP now. And I was like, okay, with this, they could probably pull through. Um, but as the week... Uh, we played this game weekly, so as the week went on, I uh, kind of kept an analyze, uh, analyzing this, the, the fight. And not only that, I tried to analyze the, the PCs themselves, like, why they did this. And there's no logical reason to do what they did. The only... The... Now I did, you know, talk to him a bit, a little bit about about it, but um, in the end, it was just it it it, it was just a dumb idea, <laughs> is the thing. And I don't want to be, and I don't want to like be a, a DM that goes, you know, these ideas are stupid. But I couldn't really find any other or any way to describe it because in all my years of playing this game and running it, not just fifth edition, of course. I mean, like D and D in general and tabletop games. I've never had a situation where PCs voluntarily rest rested in a occupied dungeon in a in a place that is guaranteed guaranteed to have people come to it, um, especially when they are completely nearly tapped out. So, and that kind of racked my brain. And as I and then as I you know thought about that, I thought about the combat, and I realized that this combat can get really bad. Because the issue is not the fact that um, Kaz and Zenar will be in the front rows trying to hold off the, the impending uh, Earth Cultist. It's the priest who can cast Shatter. Now, in the, in the previous diary, I learned that Shatter is now a, a Thunder-based AoE spell. Which means you generally get a pretty decent second level AoE spell, um, which is pretty impressive. You generally don't get very good AoE damage spells in... Um, at second level in the previous editions. Um, and he has enough spell slots to kind of blow away things. Um, we're looking at... I, I kind of did math in my head. Um, this guy had um, four... Sec I believe it was four sec uh, second level spells and two third level spells. He was going to use at least one spell to blow, or blow apart the door. So essentially he would have a third level spell and four second level spells. Now Shatter is second level, it does 3d8 base, and it does an extra d8 for every higher spell level. So... That is essentially, um, fifth, let's see, making sure I, let's make sure I did my math right here real quick. Priest. Yeah, oh, sorry, three, he had three second level slots and two third level slots, that's right. Okay, so he, he was going to use a third level spell slot to blow open the door with a shatter, and then he would have essentially three, six, nine, thirteen D8 worth of AoE thunder damage. Not all at once, of course, but... Essentially, he was just going to spam it every round. There was no reason for him not to. And it's a 10-foot AoE. Now, if we take a look at this real quick, I can switch to... Hmm, did you lose visibility? Oh, I know why. Because you have... It's right now because of lighting. Uh, let's do 90. There we go. So, with this view here, I mean... Now, with the way the doors are, the doors are definitely way too wide. But if I was going to be going off these openings here, I could have literally just put a... I could have put a spell there. I could have put a spell there. And it's 10 foot radius, so that means it would go... Essentially, you could do it like this. And pretty much hit everyone in the room. And the concern I have was... Because the parties usually doesn't take positioning too well, usually. I mean, they're, they're getting better at it, but they're still kind of... They haven't really had any situations where they really need to be very concerned about positioning but besides melee. In fact, this is the first time they've encountered an enemy that actually had AoE damage spells. So, essentially, he could he was just going to blast this room. Um, I, was, I uh, One of the main things that was... Um, well, I'll talk about that later. Let's talk about more... So, like I said, I was concerned about the AoE spells, because the issue wasn't whether or not the front line fell. Um, I was definitely concerned about Zenar, because Zenar will go berserk eventually. Um, because it's his low HP makes the wisdom save really hard to do. Um, but the issue was what is whether or not what would happen with the party if they start getting hit with AOE spells. Um, and it really 
because sometimes the party just kind of ignores things like they don't they don't take everything into account i mean obviously they pick this room for some reason um and sometimes they'll think oh whatever why why should i move that extra five foot step just to get you know to get out of sight so maybe i could just stand right here and be okay and this pretty much kind of throws that in their face because i mean ren was like oh i'm okay in this spot even though the bed in front of me just exploded so i i was like okay well i'll just move the spell one more space to the left and hit him with it and once the party kind of re realized that um they adapted to it which was very very good but like i said i was really concerned about this because the issue was if anyone fell because of those th those uh shatter spells it's it would be downhill from there because they don't have very much healing left and every time the AOE spells would hit, it would count as a failed death save to anyone that's laying on the ground. So the issue wasn't really a party wipe, even though I definitely had that concern because it could very well go that bad. But I was also concerned just that people were going to die. Um, and I was, and taking that into consideration, I was extremely, extremely worried. Like, I want to punish players that do bad decisions. I mean, that's that needs to happen. Because if I don't, it's just going to promote them to continue making bad decisions. And I was in a situation where I was like, if I punish them, I could wipe the party or kill a good chunk of the party. And that will pretty much bring the campaign to a halt. Um, if you kill part of the party, it's just going to slow everything down because we're going to have to make new characters and somehow try to introduce them into the campaign. And if my NPC dies, that's one less mercenary they'll have to actually call upon in the future. Um, if it was a full party wipe, I really would not sure what I would do. I mean, they, I mean, I mean, they can make new characters, but where where do I start them? Um, I would do it. Would I reset this dungeon um, back back to the original? Um, I I wouldn't really know what I was going to do, and I was really really concerned about that. Um, now throughout the week, um, I my we have a Discord chat. You've probably seen it pop up, and I've accidentally clicked on it a few times. Um, and we have, we have a group chat, but it's usually pretty quiet, uh, outside of the game. Um, occasionally I'll post things there to try to talk to people and I'll get occasional responses, but for the most part, it's pretty silent. Um, but I started, um, I started talking privately with the player that plays Kaz, uh, Rebecca, and she plays a lot of, you know, Pathfinder and, you know, she plays D&D &D, obviously. And so I just been talking to her and kind of talking shop and things like that. And eventually I kind of just like, I pretty much just. I've been. I started just kind of telling her concerns I've had as a DM running this campaign. Because I mean, I'm. It's been a while since I've DM'd, and I'm trying to get better at it. And I was just kind of saying my concerns. Like I, I, I told her things like I was kind of concerned about what the party feels about Nara, and she's like, you know, she was like, I, I, I think she's been doing great. I think she does great damage, and I was, and I was like, yeah, um. I, I mean, and I definitely recognize that that Nara does really good damage, and you know, all sorts of things. I just kind of talked about talk to her about pretty much everything uh i do i do my best not to reveal anything too much behind the curtain but sometimes i kind of just explain kind of some of the mechanics because it's 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 nice to have someone to talk i like talking mechanics i mean i'm i'm a game programmer um so and i make so essentially i make games i talk about games i make videos about games i it's it's kind of my thing and it's definitely something i'm very comfortable um having conversations about um eventually i kind of just uh essentially the day of the session, I was like, I might end up killing the party. I pretty much splat out soldier. I was like, there's a good chance I could kill everybody because of this stupid decision. And I, part of me wanted to like talk to the party ahead of time. That's uh, the start of the video. At uh, the start of the, um, the session, I, uh, I believe I still left it on in there um, that I was like, I was considering talking to you guys for a bit, but I'm just going to let this play through. Um, that talking I was going to do, uh, there's a lot of things I wanted to talk about. Obviously, I wanted to talk about some of the treasure I missed, because there was some treasure I missed um, from the previous session, because it was hard to figure out stuff in the book. Um, there was some, I wanted to talk a little bit about alignment, because of the way they kind of broken it, they kind of, how they handled the introduction to this monastery type thing. Because essentially, they look like the bad guys. Um, and then, of course, but those didn't really matter if the party was going to wipe. <laughs> and so, eventually, I, I was considering talking to them about how bad this decision was like they did there was nothing there was nothing smart about the decision they guaranteed ensured that they were not going to get their full rest like 100 percent. there's no chance they were going to get interrupted and uh, technically an interrupted uh, full rest should have probably given them nothing they shouldn't have leveled up they shouldn't have you know gotten any their um 
short rest of things, but I kind of gave him that much. Um, but uh, talking with Rebecca, she's just like, I mean, for, it was really reassuring to hear her just say, you know, I'm fine with just making a new character. If we do something stupid, kill us. And I was like, I mean, I still felt bad, but I was like, I, I was like, okay, I'll just see what happens. Because I'm, I was like, worst case scenario, the party wipes. Um, and then from there, it could be people die, Nara could die. Um, it, it could be bad to worse. There are some other options I could, uh, could have, I considered like taking them prisoner. Uh, the problem, though, with taking the prisoner is assu uh, that assumes that they, the the anyone they fell uh, does not die from failed death saves or getting hit with e excess damage. So, and also the party is not exactly built for escaping <laughs> from prison type things. So, it would have been pretty complicated that way too. But um, I was very glad that the fight went reasonably well. Um, one question that did come up that I went ahead and cut out. I, there was actually a, a long discussion uh, in the middle of the session that I cut out. That was essentially, just essentially, um, Ren was like, "Hey, just real talk. Did you pull the punches?" That was pretty much the main question because then I was like, "Yeah, I should be dead." <laughs> um, and for the most part, I told them exactly what I I, I did. I, I told them exactly any situations where I did pull punches. Um, there was one situation I, uh, before this fight even occurred in the previous session with the door guards that I pulled punches. I, I pretty much was like, I, I was like, Zenar, you know these guys go invisible. I could have done much more horrible things to, the part, uh, to you guys when you split the party. Because all I really had to had to do is go invisible, maybe let, wait until you guys go into a room, uh, like room M5 here, and just bam, open up with a bunch of attacks and you die. Or bam, I open up with a bunch of enlarges, then you die. And that would have been it. That would have killed Constance and Zenar pretty much immediately because they would have no way out. Um, so he, he completely understood that. Um, and honestly, I didn't want to just. I, I should have, but I, I didn't because, like I said, it would really have just caused a lot of issues. Um, the other thing I kind of did for pulling punches, I could have been a little bit more aggressive about starting the cast spells in the center. Um, now, the good news is uh, they kind of took uh, Nara's idea of hiding in the corners uh, eventually and once they took advantage of the fact they kind of they sent that all players essentially have spring attack in fifth edition where they can move take an action and then use the rest of their movement um, once they started taking advantage of that and staying in the corners um i think um that was pretty much really that was one of the sure ways to ensure that um the party that the party would make it through if they hadn't done that tactic it was pretty much guaranteed that they were probably gonna get themselves worn out um I mean, I could have done some cheeky things, like try to reposition um, like this, so I'll see it like all the way through here. But like I mentioned, I, I told them that these doors shouldn't be this wide, and so I kind of took it to took that into account as far as like positioning the um, the shatter spells. Also, there's you know, of course, guys blocking the way. So honestly, I didn't want to be too cheeky with the the shatters, um, but I definitely hopefully drove in home uh, in home that how dangerous uh, those types of spells can be. Um, beyond that, the only other thing I could, I could, I did that was a bit of a, of, of a pulled punch is one of the rounds where I, the first round where I ran out of shatters, I'd cast a, a cantrip instead of attacking with the glaive. Um, I could have done more damage with the glaive, assuming I hit, um, the priests aren't really accurate. In fact, they only have plus four to their, uh, accuracy with the glaive, which is the lowest I've seen in this dungeon so far. Um, but if he had hit at all with them, that probably would have taken down Xanar. Um, which would have made the fight a little bit longer, maybe a little bit more difficult. But at that point, like once they survived the shatters, um, it was pretty much guaranteed they'll be okay. Um, both uh, Ren and Nara have really high AC, and they could probably tank the rest of the, the combat if they needed to, while um, Constance provided uh, Firebolt support. Um, speaking of uh, Firebolt support, um, since uh, Constance was like a sorceress, um, I allowed her, when she uh, changed levels, when she gained a level, she of course changed her spells. And since it's like kind of an innate ability type thing, I kind of allowed it, even though technically you can't get spells except through, you know, usually you can't memorize new spells unless you're full resting, but of course sorcerers don't actually need to full rest for that. So that's why she had a different cantrip and she had like firebolt and she started doing like ranged attacks. Uh, speaking of, like, firebolts and stuff, what's the deal with the freaking cantrip damage? I mean, all, like, pretty much all the cantrips that were being used were supposed to be, like, 1d10s or 1d8s, and 
it was almost like consistently ones and twos. I don't know why. It was just really pathetic damage. I don't know why. Um, anyway, so really the fight came down to whether or not the front line can hold against the um, the knights and whether the uh, the guards and whether or not they can get through. Um, obviously, like I mentioned before, this party's pretty good at melee, but the things they were up against were really high AC enemies that had either equal or higher AC than most of the party. Um, and so it really became just a clash of who can get more hits in and more damaging hits in. And in that aspect, they were kind of at a disadvantage because Xenar had two attacks, Constance had one attack, but these two guys had two attacks each. So it was four attacks versus three attacks. Um, but the attacks that Constance and Zenar had were more damaging. So, and as far as accuracy is concerned, I think they were both about equal, um, or slightly higher. So it kind of varied. But yeah, there was definitely some a lot of concern about them dying from a stupid mistake. I mean, it was definitely probably one of the stupidest mistakes. I kind of pointed that. To, I kind of talked to them about that too. I was like, this was not smart. Um, and the thing that made it just more frustrating is uh before the session started i went ahead and reviewed the footage of the previous session and i i i checked to see how i warned them i literally was i literally asked them do you really think you can last eight uh eight hours rest full resting in this place the response was of course we killed a lot of people and eventually they flat out uh some zenar and some other people flat out said hey we uh, we thought we got everybody which of course was not even remotely true, because especially since they've been fearful of gargoyles for some reason. Not that there's any reason to be fearful of gargoyles. Um, but I, I, I kind of just flat out told them, hey, zoom out. This is how, um, at this point, when they, um, when they were in this room here, it's probably kind of hard to see with, the, uh, see with the, the map zoomed out, but essentially they had only explored maybe a fourth of the dungeon. They hadn't explored. There's still plenty more they hadn't explored yet. So, it... I mean, technically that's meta-knowledge, but technically you could try to assume that this place might have a basement. Um, but, yeah, they 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 kept making assumptions, um, which is always a dangerous thing. I've kind of... I had had that issue with a particular PC that was no, that's no longer with us in and, um, and the Sunless Citadel uh, playthrough. Um, but... They were making they were making assumptions with no data. That's the issue. They were making assumptions with no data. I tried to warn them. They ignored my warning. And the worst part of all, the worst part of all about of all about this decision they made of sleeping in the barracks was there was a completely safe option they could have just taken, which was to go back to the carriage with, where they hid the carriage and just rest there. Um, now, granted, there's still random encounters they could have encountered there, but at least they wouldn't be trapped. <laughs> they wouldn't be trapped in an enclosed room with no exit. Like, literally, there's no way out. Like, this window here, um, at the bottom of um, M4 here, that is an arrow slit, at least according to the description in the book. You cannot fit through that arrow slit. So, it is what it is. And so, yeah. They really, they could have just left. I mean, there was some concern about possibly them getting reinforcements, but if they're going to be sleeping for eight hours, if they're going to get eight um, reinforcements... Within that time frame, where they are in the map doesn't matter. In fact, it would have made things worse. So, yeah. Um, so the, the really the logic just didn't add up, and I'm hoping they'll take that into account in the future. Um, Kaz definitely did. Um, obviously, I kind of explained to Rachel out of out of game um, over chat. I was like, "This is ridiculous. <laughs> this is a really bad decision. Really stupid." Um, and Kaz was, like, at low hit points and literally was, like, picked up Ren and just started heading out. Like, even though the they, their front lines barely survived the uh, the fight, um, I mean, Zanar had to pop his orc ability, orc resilient thing, um, and Kaz was... I, I watched their health boards just gradually deplete. And they had used... They had, they had used their channel divinity they got back. They used all the spell slots they had available, which was only two. And then uh, they used, and Constance used a scroll of Cure Light Wounds at second level that she had, uh, which was a good news. Um, the fact they started using some items they had collected from previous adventures, I think was a good thing. I was very glad that Constance remembered she had a potion of fire breathing. She used it to great effect. Um, she did forget that she had the magic missile uh, spell-like ability uh, for the day, but uh, she eventually used it at the very end. But, but like I mentioned, like, so... Kaz, like, picked up Ren and was literally carrying him out of the place because 
she was not going to stay here another night. Um, and it was probably a good thing too, because literally they're like, oh, well, we get, now they're all dead. We can rest here now. And I was like, if they had done that, I would just, I would have spawned things. I would just start spawning things until they got it through their skull to stop resting here. I mean, Ted, I mean, I would have, I mean, actually, I wouldn't have to spawn anything. I could just be like, whatever. I'll just grab the freaking gargoyles. <laughs> I'll grab the gargoyles. Four gargoyles. Have fun. Because that's ridiculous. I mean, I. it's just... I mean, some of the ideas, like, if you're thinking, like, medieval times, like, without magic in concept, like, blocking a room, you can probably hold yourself in there. But even then, like, there's ways... There's definitely medieval ways to smoke someone out of a room. But in the case of magic... If, if you're trapped in a room and you, that person has AoEs, you are in trouble. And that's some stuff they hopefully will take into account in the future. Now, um, when they got back to the carriage, they kind of did a little bit of role-playing, kind of having a dinner and be like, or having a good breakfast and be like, hey, we're alive, and kind of finally get some information about the Earth Cults. Um, I definitely forgot some information from the uh, scriptorium they went to, into, so I kind of filled that in um, when... Um, when Ren rested, uh, was uh, doing watch and reading the books and stuff like that. Um, technically, he probably didn't have that information yet because it was going to take time of re to research all of it. Um, that was just part of the re that was just part of the stuff that where I just kind of forgot some loot because I kept my eyes kind of glaze over some of the uh, the sections that specifically say treasure. So that was kind of an issue on my part. So I kind of reestablished that. Um, not a really big deal. Uh, the group kind of ex they started doing their exploring. They kind of just freely started exploring because for the most part they cleared it. The place is clear. Um, I could have respawned a few things, but to be honest, since they're so close to the area, I went ahead and just left it alone. And uh, hopefully that'll be good enough. Um, since everybody's dead, on, I could assume that they probably haven't sent a call to the um, the lower levels to um, get more reinforcements. Um, they ran into Renwick, who's a lich. Yes, he is a actual lich, CR 20 or 21 or whatever it is, with legendary actions and all that fun stuff. Um, for the most part, there's there's ways to parlay with Rinrick, but this party has not been very good about socializing at all. Um, it's just like I don't know. They just don't they don't seem to have any empathy <laughs> as far as or that, they don't have any I guess insight and uh, like real life insight into like how these people uh, how this person is reacting or behaving. And to be fair, I mean it's kind of hard to read a lich and understand exactly to fathom what they are and how powerful they are. Um, uh, I believe uh, Rebecca out of game um, after the game was like, I really want to talk to that guy, and I was like, there's, I, I did kind of respond like, dialogue is an option. In fact, there was di dialogue was an option back in the front entrance. Uh, there's some caveats, of course, like in some cases, like you have to have certain information even to have it to make it possible. For example, if they had some information about the cults already, um, when they talked to the guys in the front door, they could have possibly gotten themselves in, um, but. They didn't have any information. They act, they've been kind of using just their they've been using their personal hooks and not none of the other rumors. So they've got very bare minimum information, um, which is I guess partially my fault because I wanted to make sure they have information so they have something to do. Um, but it seems like they kind of beeline to all the locations they have on their map and kind of ignored everything involving Red Larch. And Red Larch is supposed to be your kind of your main hub, your main source of information in the beginning because it has so many rumors. Um, there's also that big entire like plot about the missing delegation, but it's for the most part the group's kind of been ignoring it. And I, I don't really have an issue with that because this is kind of supposed to be designed like an open world type thing. And it one way or the other, they will stumble upon these other plot these other plot threads, uh, whether intentionally or not. And I think that's a really cool thing. Now I look forward to seeing kind of how that unfolds. Um, but anyway, they talk they for the most part, it, um, one thing that's really nice about the um, the guide, this book about uh, that explains the adventure and all that, is it's pretty good about explaining like how the person behaves and how they react. For the most part, with the Earth Cultists, it was very blunt about how they were going to behave and how they just were no nonsense type of people and didn't want to deal with anybody. And Rin Rinrek was the same way. He just wants to be left alone to study, study magic for his you know endless immortal li on life. And he's a powerful being who doesn't give a sh you know, he doesn't care about the other people and doesn't want to be bothered. If a bunch of freaking mosquitoes start bothering, he has no issues about killing them immediately. So, um, now dying was not going to be an issue. They probably would have just taken a lot of nasty damage uh, if they had pressured him. But they kind of got it through their head that maybe we shouldn't talk to him. 
I mean, they tried to get Nara to talk to him, which I could have done something clever with that, but that really just would have just not done anything good for anybody. Um, besides that, um, they kind of explored the place. They've been giving the statues a wide berth, which I don't know if that's meta-knowledge or not, whether or not they think they're real gargoyles or not. I I don't really care at this point. I just kind of let them do it. And then, of course, the final thing room was, of course, the room with the Umber Hulk. Uh, the Umber Hulk was an altered form. It had, um, it had the artificial blades, which did different damage than the claws. I think it does more damage than the claws. Um, but they had all, they, their, two of their eyes were ripped out, so they couldn't do the confusion gaze. So that made the fight a little bit more doable. If, if the confusion gaze was a thing, um, they probably would have been in a lot more trouble. Um, but yeah, they managed to fight that, and they're in the lower levels, and hopefully they'll kind of finish things up. I do definitely have some concerns about possibly doing things out of order. Which is, in this case, it's very much possible. Um, but I think I have some ways to kind of nudge them in a different direction, and hopefully that will get them to keep from skipping over content. Because if they skip over content, they might not be high enough level to handle the next, uh, to handle whatever they go to next. Um, so I'm hoping to get them to clear the area and hopefully get access to the prisoners that are down here. And then these prisoners will hopefully give them some additional information. And as they get free of those prisoners and help them out, um, that'll lead to some other uh, encounters that will kind of give the players a bit more stuff to chew on. Um, but yeah, overall, the session went really well. Like I said, I was kind of having some panic attacks. Um, I was very stressed out, partially because it was right after a Pathfinder session uh, the day before. Um, and I was just really concerned. I like this group a lot, and I don't want to... As much as I, I don't want them to think they're invincible, which is definitely a thing that the party thinks they are, um, I think they've been really overconfident and fairly cocky. Um, there was one thing I also discussed at the end of the session uh, that I didn't record, um, which was kind of just talking about alignments in general. I, I told them to kind of look up some stuff. I kind of gave them some links to Matthew Colville stuff that kind of explains alignments and kind of gave my own thoughts about it. And I kind of explained how I had some issues about them kind of just the issue I have with the, the way they handled the monastery is literally they tried to talk to the guys there. They said, go away, and then just shut the slider. And then immediately, uh, Kaz wanted to kick down the door. Now, Kaz is chaotic neutral, and I think that was completely valid re reaction for Kaz. The issue is the rest of the party is not checking her. They're not, they're not doing anything like, whoa, 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 we need to calm down here. And Because uh, we don't know anything about these cultists. I mean, yes, they're evil. They found that out after the fact. But for the most part, I mean, some of the, the weak excuses like, oh, they're wearing evil masks, so obviously we should beat them up. I, I was not really happy about hearing answers like that. I don't like weak excuses when it comes to alignment. It really just annoys me because it's, it, sounds, it, it, makes it, it makes it feel like the person's just trying to weasel around. Like, there's, it's like those people that are like, oh, I'm chaotic good, which means I can, st I can sometimes do bad things. That's not what chaotic good means. <laughs> or or the people that think they're neutral and that means they can just murder people on you know every other day type thing and that just annoys the hell out of me because it's it feels like they're not trying to play alignment they're trying to like they're trying to get away with acting essentially you know acting needlessly aggressive when in real life they would never do something like that and that's probably one of the other things some people treat the these uh D, &D worlds as like a video game world where you can like, you know, go in and break all the pots and pants to look for rubies type of thing. Or, hey, I don't, you know, care about anybody. I'll just kill these guys for experience type thing. And, I mean, you can play games like uh, in that way. I mean, there's definitely nothing wrong with it as long as you're clear with it. But I like to treat at least, I want the players to at least treat this as kind of like, like a living, breathing world that has consequences. And I kind of told them that, and I'm hopefully hoping they kind of understand that. Because... Um, it's either that or the people, the players need to probably consider switching to the alignment, which, I mean, I'll be, dis if, if people switch off of good alignments, I'll be kind of disappointed. In fact, I kind of wish some of these people would be more good alignments just to kind of make things, them care a bit more, but I don't know. We'll see, we'll see how things go with the, when they encounter some of the prisoners and how they react to that. Um, anyway, like I said, it was pretty good. Um, now talking with uh, Rebecca a little bit, she kind of wants to, I mean, I know she's very interested in role playing and stuff, and I'm kind of in uh, a situation where things it's i feel like i don't know if i'm you know rushing things or i'm you know if i'm rushing things or not giving enough time for like content type things uh, one of the things about these sessions is they're very late in the night and they're only about two to, they're usually only about two and a half hours long 
uh, these sessions. And that means essentially we're doing about 10 hours a month, um, which isn't a lot. Um, usually most people do four hour sessions type things. And unfortunately it's just due to the, how late it is and the, the scheduling stuff, this is really all we could fit in. So I'm definitely like really concerned to make sure that, you know, the, t the session is always something that gives the player something to do. And in doing so, I sometimes, I sometimes worry about maybe not giving the, the, the party time to, you know, role play or do some characterization for themselves. Um, but it, it's maybe not the biggest worry because I mean, Kaz and Ren did took it up, take it upon themselves to kind of go to the inn and like do some shopping and do some fun stuff like that. Um, I, got a lot of positive feedback about that, that the events where they were rolling stuff out to the carriage and Constance just getting angrier and angrier. Um, Ren, uh, Kaz really loved the, uh, the, the him just, uh, her picking up just Ren and just running out of the dungeon because she, she didn't want to stay here anymore. Um, I really liked the, the reaction to, um, uh, when, uh, when Kaz said things like, you know, did you say, did you just say explosives, uh, or explosions? And, you know, there's a lot of things I think, uh, a lot of opportunities to role play, but sometimes I always worry about not giving them enough time to, you know, flesh out their behavior and stuff. And part of that also is they kind of did a lot of that in the previous adventure, but that was without Ren. So anyway, kind of rambling at this point, but like I said, this has been a, this was a good, I think the module went really well, or the, the session went really well, and um, I'm very glad they at least survived. Um, I just hope they kind of treat their characters better a little bit. <laughs> like, you have a you have a nice carriage. Go use it. Rest in it. Um, don't stay in the dungeon when you don't need to. I mean, it's just one of those things. But hopefully they'll kind of figure out their voice and realize that, you know, maybe think a little bit harder about uh, some of the decisions they make. Anyway, I am the Depressed DOR. See you guys later.